On the front page of the Daily Graphic today, we read that the managing COVID-19 patients, Exim Bank funds Tobinko to produce drugs. Five million dollars uh, facility to be advanced. Travelers operate welcome resumption of domestic flights and Immigration Ministry Mahama Lord Media for COVID-19 role as we celebrate World Freedom, uh, Press Freedom uh, Day. Ghanaian Times, local production COVID-19 treatment drugs. Exim Bank to be to strike $5 million deal and uh, for large-scale manufacture of hydrochloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, I beg your pardon, and azithromycin. COVID-19 cases in Ghana now, 2,169, getting ready for the rains <clears throat> we must regularly desilt our, our drains attack councils uh, as drag masters zoom line other desilt drains in communities provide stimulus packages for businesses and households EUC urges government and the daily guide this morning says kumawood actor bishop uh, bernard nyaku dies anxiety a ndc over new register and COVID 19 hits 2000 169 as 229 recovers. Fetish priest killed ex soldier. Government rejects Nana COVID 19 billboards. Accra diesel begins. The Finder newspaper is back. And banner headline reads COVID 19 dab on economy. President directs Bank of Ghana Finance Ministry to find solutions. GNPC dots $1 million towards construction of infectious disease isolation and treatment facility. TUC bemoans uh, devastating job loss triggered by COVID-19. Ghana's confirmed cases, 19 cases hit 2,169 and 18 dead. The BNFT this morning says stop COVID-19 stigmatization. Also, VRA cut nets losses by 91% and losses drop from 1.2 billion to 100 million Ghana cities. Loss uh, to brighter future. CD strength in first two months discourages local dollar accounts. My guest this morning, oh, well, the publisher is also here, forgive me. Bernard Nyako, uh, last words. COPEC warns of fuel shortage caused by Unipass takeover. 18 months old baby drowned well. Mom kills son thinking he was a sheep. And West Blue GCNet saved Ghana ports. They resume operations as Unipass system fails to work. My guest this morning, the Honorable Sam uh, George is a member of parliament for the Ningo. Prom, prom constituency and the honorable a champion who is also and a member of party and the head of the defense and security committee of parliament gentlemen welcome thank you very much sir Good morning. Good morning. Let, let's start off uh world press freedom day i don't know what your thoughts are sliding down uh some i'll start with you and it's of great concern both to the infraternity and government seems worried about it yesterday president Mahama spoke about it everybody seems worried that for a country a beacon of hope for Africa. Why should we be sliding down when we say we are making progress? A very good morning to you, Johnny, and um, to my and very good friend, um, Achi, um, and to our very, very distinguished viewers across the, the country and the world. Um, let me use this opportunity. Yesterday was World Press Freedom Day mm. to celebrate our brothers and colleagues in the media fraternity, the fourth estate of the realm, as you referred to. Mm. You, you keep everyone mm -hmm. informed, mm -hmm. educated, and entertained. Mm. Um, Ghana has, over the years, <laughs> even in the heady days of just the post-revolution, mm. at the beginning of our democracy, Ghana <laughs> had made strides as a country where there was some level of freedom. Mm -hmm. From the early 2000s, we continued to make very good strides, repeal of criminal libel law, mm -hmm. and, and uh, an embracing of more mere plurality, which mm -hmm. actually started under President Rawls when you saw the, the, the introduction of private media mm -hmm. um, houses, um, both radio and television. This has continued extensively under President Mills. Um, we we clocked best or the best number one in Africa mm. on the World Press Freedom Index, and we've maintained that position and constantly increased in the world rankings globally. Unfortunately, mm. in 2017, with the advent of the Akufuado administration, mm. 
you have seen what has appeared to be a state capture of the media, what clamping do down on media houses, the closure of 131 media houses, the medal of journalists, the assault of journalists, the intimidation of journalists and media houses. I mean, TV3 yourself is no exception. Um, your, popular, your popular cartoonist, Tilapia, mm. has been the subject of government attention mm. and wholesome government mm. attention. Um, and and not, just, not just you. I mean, several other media houses have had causes to complain. Citizen journalists have had to retire from journalism, active journalism. Mm. Um, they've had to leave media houses. Some of them have had to actually leave the country with their family. Mm. Uh, that one who readily comes to mind is Mr. Adeti of uh, EIB Network mm. and the threats to his family simply because he, he took on a member of government, a member of the establishment, mm. you know, and exposed corruption in, in, in government. He's, he's been attacked, he's had to leave and flee with his, with his, with his family, living in constant fear. You've seen Prince Minka of, 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 former, formerly of, um, of Power X, FM, X, formerly X, of XYZ, and yeah. the attacks in his house. I mean, the, 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 the murder of uh, Ahmed Suwale, it's it just, it's just unbelievable, the kinds of things. And it's, it's just shocking. so gloomy because they, for example, I remember last year, the Minister for Information said there was going to be a media enhancement capacity program that was going to happen and that they would all steps to ensure that the freedom of the press is guaranteed. It, it, so it, it cannot be all gloomy. It, it, See, rhetoric is one, action is another. It's fine for you to make all the fine promises. You can even have the training programs and enhancement workshops for journalists. Mm. But after enhancing their capacity and you clamp down on them and, and stop them from speaking, I mean, simply because a media house, multimedia, exposed government complicity mm. in the, the training of armed vigilantes or vigilante groups, the, 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 is it I group or whatever, mm -hmm. I group, that was being trained, housed within a national security facility, mm -hmm. the castle. Okay. Mm -hmm. What did you see? You saw government boycott the entire multimedia platform. Simply the intolerance of government. And I mean, when you compare this to a government I served under, the Muhammad administration, mm -hmm. and the kinds of scathing attacks that the media carried out, some justifiably, some without justify justification, mm -hmm. but the fact that we respected the right of the media mm -hmm. to have their editorial discretion and policy, you ask yourself, and this is not me saying this, mm -hmm. the international rankings are showing. For, since 2017, mm -hmm. every year, Ghana has dropped. Ghana has not gone up even once mm -hmm. in, in, in three years of this administration. It tells you that the mm -hmm. world is taking notice We've lost our enviable number one. I think today we are number three or number mm -hmm. four mm -hmm. in Africa. Globally, we've dropped about five, seven places. I mean, it is un unheard of. In the last 20 what, years... What are we doing now? Quickly and then I'll come... Government, government simply needs to be tolerant. The intolerance of government is unbecoming. It, it's painting us in a bad light. Mm -hmm. Government must bear in mind that the media have a responsibility to expose rot in the government. Mm -hmm. And that government must be responsive to the exposés, not responsive to shutting down the sources of the exposés. The citizens have a right. Mm -hmm. The media has this discretion, and the media should be allowed to do their work. Okay, thank you. Uh, stepping for me at this point, yeah. World Press Freedom Day, some days we've been dropping, and that's, of course, it's re the record and the facts show that we've slid down three steps. And he says, that's not good. You should be responding to the issues raised and not be attacking the people and their institutions raise the issues if really you are concerned about pressure. What do you say? All right. Good morning, my brother. I think some has really chronicled some of the things that uh, facts that have been okay. However, let's straighten up some of the facts as well. Mm. It is indeed true that there's a decline, but this is not our worst performance mm. as far as the data is concerned, as far as the history is concerned. Mm. Beyond that, we need to remind ourselves in this age mm -hmm. where we have new media, mm -hmm. new media and traditional media, mm -hmm. there's a mix, total general mix. But let's look at the numbers as we've been talking about it. If you look to the facts, 
Let me see. I was just trying to Google. I got some information two days back. I was just trying to go back to it. Let me say that, first and foremost, mm -hmm. let me say this government will continue to work with the media. Mm -hmm. And I have been around for some time. Mm -hmm. And I can attest to the fact that this gun has really improved the relationships we have with media. Really? Yes. How so? Let me go forward. Mm. This is my third term in parliament. Right. This government have mustered courage and have established the right to information bill and it's become an act today as I speak. Mm. It, that didn't, is, it didn't come just like that. We had to mount pressure on government to do that. Which government wasn't the same? Let me, let, let, me, let me repeat myself. I said I've been in government mm -hmm. for, for three, three terms. terms. My entry into government was under President Mills, mm -hmm. medium amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. It did not just start President Mills. Okay. It started with President Kofo. It started with President Rawlings. Mm -hmm. But this government, this administration, have been bold and brave. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just come because of pressure mount. But it entails a lot. Mm. That comes with the legal regulation of media, mm -hmm. comes with the practice, and what we should be doing. Fast forward. Mm. The data as we speak, mm -hmm. even in 2018, last 2018, mm -hmm. Ghana was first. Namibia, we've been hiding behind Namibia all these years. Mm -hmm. But in 2018, we surpassed Namibia. That is not what I am here to do. Okay, well, what I am here to do is to educate ourselves to appreciate that this government values the media. Really? And yes. The, 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 chronicle, uh, the chronicles of, and I, we could go give, give you a litany of attacks, personal attacks on journalists. Our own government, and I'm here. Latif was beaten at the front of the police. That if you isolate, mm. if you isolate conversations like that, mm. I don't do conversations like that. Under the word of His Excellency President Mahama, mm. an aide of state mm. harassed a journalist. I hate name mentioning when I come to conversations like that. Exactly, I don't go to that. But that's not my nature. Okay. The point is, how do we move on right. as a state? Mm. Data knows how I do my conversations. Okay. So I hate isolations. Mm. It is an issue we are dealing with. Okay. Primarily, the track of the conversation in the country today is because closures of some entities and their operations. Mm. And they are working within the rule of law. Okay. Let us respect truthfully the rule of law when mm. it is applied. Mm. If it doesn't go well, let us speak against it. We should not hide under isolations mm. and just ma and ma the uh, water by for isolations, all How do you mean? The instances you are stating. Okay. They are, they are if, if, if we want, yes, very isolations. If, if you have been beaten before as a pressman doing your work by 10 policemen, that, as my colleagues at Ghana Times were beaten up for doing their work, you wouldn't call that isolation, would you? Kindly remind yourself mm. you work in a very responsible environment. And here I would encourage mm. my colleagues and my friends in the media. Besides all that we may work with, with a zealous nature that we would want to work, mm. we should remind ourselves that there is some level of responsibility we must apply ourselves to. In every environment, mm. you should know your boundaries. Okay. And we should not allow ourselves to go. I'm not saying there are no incidents or accidents on mm. earth. They may come, may arrive. However, you talked about if I have ever been bitten before. Mm. Yes, I've been bitten before because I've been a student leader and I've gone on the streets and I've been whipped by police. But not as a journalist. You see, so, so, hold, hold on a minute. So, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. So, in, in the our rights, our rights, so, our rights so, so, do senior not said, limit us in a sense. Senior said, look, right. in this Ghanaian Times matter, uh, a certain uh, Sergeant Akrofi so he rides an unregistered motorbike, jumps the traffic light. The, the journalist picks up the, the phone to record this video, and they end up being assaulted. Why, what's the irresponsibility of the journalist? A man in before on an unregistered motorbike jumps the red light. The journalist films it. He 
comes back to beat them with the colleagues. And you say the journalist was irresponsible, he didn't work within remit. I don't get you. You are spot on with your facts. However, it doesn't rest in our mouths and in our judgment, as we are sitting here, mm. to rule out the facts. I wasn't there. Mm. It's a report incident. Mm. I do cannot sit here and prejudge. Them. What they went to court. However, mm. however, like you rightly said, the proper adjudication processes were pursued. Mm. And once a redress has been sought, that is another level of the matter. Have you followed up to find out what has happened to the gentleman mm. who came from the security services? We need to follow up to see whether the right institutional measures for reprimanding such characters have been applied. Okay, let's let's move forward. No, no, no. Let us let us let us deal with these matters mm -hmm. as and when they come before us. Mm -hmm. If a bad nut is within a particular envelope and they mess up, they need to be punished. Right. And we should not just extend it to an administration because the bad nut must face the regrets of the law by themselves. Okay. It is by their own decision to do what they did. Mm -hmm. It is criminal. It's an offense for an officer in uniform to ride a bike without an identification, without a registration. Mm. In the first instance, it's a crime. Mm. And so the journalist mm. helped the state. He, the officer, is not above the law. Mm. In the sense where he is enclosed with the material apparel of the state mm. as a security service, mm. he representing the law, and he was at the wrong side. That's why the court came on. You, you know, let me just quickly make a... So a, a, we can move yes. on. Mm. You see, what my, my, my senior needs to understand is, yes, it's thin and through. You can't run away from the fact that the Akufa administration did pass the RTI in law mm -hmm. and made it act. But what is the value of an act that cannot be used? The RTI, as we speak today, cannot be used. It is, for, for want of a better phrase, useless law. Because, because, there's no because, because the president has, no, the president has to set up a board to set fees and charges. Mm -hmm. Don't forget when the RTI was passed, government said it needed one year right. to implement it. Right. It's been one year and three months. The president cannot set up a board. And see, this is where the... the you the, say the president cannot set up a board. How do you know that? Ah, if he can set up a board right now, he'll set up a board. Because recently when my colleague, our colleague, the honorable member for Ashaman, mm -hmm. and Norway, mm -hmm. wrote to the Electoral Commission, Commission. requesting information, what was the excuse the Electoral Commission gave? They don't know what fee and charge to charge. And it is the board that is mandated to set the fees and charges. So if the president passes a law, mm -hmm. make himself and his government look good, but what would give implementation to that law? Mm -hmm. He fails to take that action. And in one year and three months, the president is simply not able to name individuals to a board mm -hmm. for them to bring before parliament the fees and charges so that the fees and charges act of parliament will incorporate that so that mm -hmm. citizens can now give life to the RTI, then those who suggest that the RTI has been passed as a mere media stunt mm. and that the president is afraid that Ghanaians will use the RTI to demand information in an election year and expose the rot in his government. And for that reason, for a year and three months, going a year and four months now, we've entered May, mm. a year and four months, the president has failed to name a board. It's intentional. He's not naming a board so that we cannot find out information, have justification. Has Parliament the asked this index... question? Has Parliament asked this question? The oh. information minister is with you in Parliament. Sir. The information minister has spoken to this issue where he claims that the president is taking steps. That's his response, official response. He's taking steps to put in place a board. Mm. Let's ask, does, it, does the president need one year and four months to put together a board? How long did it take the president to put together a board for COVID-19 transformed? When did the coronavirus start? When did the president decide that he needed to set up a trust fund? Has the president not put together a board that is receiving that is receiving funding already expending? But for RTI, which gives the citizens access to information, which rightly so, my brother Archie and every other person who speaks for government would credit President Akufuado to, and you cannot take it away from him. For 21 years, okay. Parliament and successive governments failed to pass the RTI. He, he has passed it. But in passing the law, when you give citizens the enabling power mm. to utilize that law, it's less law. Phil, what do you say? Thank you very much. I'm happy 
the information minister said, the president is taking steps. Mm -hmm. Governance, Jata knows, is not as we're sitting around this table and running our mouths. One year and over? You may count one year and over. In crafting law ourselves mm -hmm. together in the legislature, agreed and admitted that, like Jata narrated, mm -hmm. 21 years you take a decision. Why were we not able to move to even closing the chapter in the legislature and handing it over to the executive? If you clear the impediments, you still have ways and ensuring that you do the right thing. And so I, mm. I move clearly in my mind mm. that the president will set the board very, very soon. When? But let me just jump when? on. When? I cannot dictate for the president. Is he is the only person. No, you may talk. It is not more than a year. When was it? The law passed. Wait more than a year. Actually. Wait a minute. When was the law passed? December 2018. December 2018. Very, very good. So December 2019 18. was the year. Yeah, 19 was a year. So, so let me see this. When did we? Where are we? Are we in normal times now? Okay. <laughs> no, are we in normal times now? We should appreciate reality. Okay. Reality is that how I set myself to run this year. Mm. It's not how I am. I never assumed, mm -hmm. as I commenced this 2020, being a nose and a mouth mask like I am talking to you this mm -hmm. morning. It is never the same. Mm -hmm. And so, in life, that is the reality. Indeed, as the information minister said to us mm -hmm. that the president is taking mess, I believe him 100%. You're saying that COVID has stopped everything. It is not that COVID is. that has stopped everything. Okay. Before you set up a board of that nature, you need a lot of consultation. When, when, the, when the government was busy pushing the agenda of the RTI, it didn't envisage that the board which was a requisite in the law should have been scouted for at the time. When the government was busy pushing the agenda of the law, mm -hmm. it is a strategy that you have to accomplish. And it is not a one-prone strategy. Okay. The first leg was to ensure that you conquer the legislature. Mm -hmm. For 21 years, you've not been able to conquer the legislature. Okay. You've been able to do that. When you have to implement it, you must understand, just as my brother Sam said, mm -hmm. this is not an empty space. This is a competitive space. Okay. So every step out of way, you ought to measure mm -hmm. your foots clean. Okay. All right. yeah, but, but Johnny, you, you know, you know we, as media people, no, no, in 10 seconds, in just 10 seconds, as media people, you can also not explain. The NCA, which is shutting down radio stations today, mm -hmm. is headed by two, has two journalists on the board, Paul Admotri and the chairman is Kweku Sechiado. Oh, so you yourselves Sam, Sam, have questions Sam, to answer Sam, as the Sam, media Sam, and the standards that Sam, you need to maintain. Sam, Sam, we, we, just, you know, just, just for the record, you know, we, we, we have, have also, the no, NCA no, is, is, is no, the one that has closed down. I don't think. I don't think I don't think two gentlemen only constitutes the board. They are they are not here to, to defend themselves. No, Thank I'm you just stating the facts. Thank you very much. I'm stating facts. As so. a moderator, I wouldn't want him to go out too far. <laughs> I want him to be with you. So, so I'm saying that the two gentlemen are not here to defend themselves. Yeah, but what I've said is but, not but unfair. You see, well, you yes, see. you have stated, but I'm saying that a board is also composed of a number of people. Yes. Yes. So about seven persons. Yes. One has resigned. Mm -hmm. You see, he serves on the communications committee, <laughs> and I don't want him to bring import here. Okay. So I want us to deal with the subject as you have put yes, for us. great. Let's make progress. Um, page 6 of Publisher News, it says, West Blue, GC, let's save Ghana port. Um, a story by my, my good brother, Halifax Osada. It says that West Blue Consulting Limited and Ghana Community Network Services Limited and both agreed to tend to work and save the country from the two and a half days of revenue loss and complete disruption in trade facilitation, although a letter from Senior Minister Ya Osafo Mafo that directed them to shut down systems is yet to be revoked. Based on the Ya Osafo Mafo's letter, uh, both companies comply when shutting down their trade facilitation systems at the country's port early Tuesday morning to make way for Ghana Link Unipass to deploy its supposed superior systems, but it ended up in a complete mess and chaotic situation at the post as the Unipass system could simply not work. We were only told verbally to return to work to save the country from the embarrassment and
disgrace and we complied because we are law abiding citizens. If no one had rated us to shut down, we would not have shut down. Uh, that's what a senior official of uh, GCNET said. So, let, let's come back. GCNET is, is back at the port. This is good news, uh, is it not? But they're saying that the letter that first asked them to go away has not been revoked. I don't know what you um, make of this, but it, it, it does appear that the Unipass is still hanging in the background. Is Johnny, that the about you two weeks ago, I, I had a show with you on another platform on this network mm. um, and highlighted this possible challenge with the Unipass system. And I've been vindicated. Look, the senior minister must bear in mind, and like my big honorable Isaac Adongo said, mm. the senior minister must bear in mind that when the NDC administration of John Dramani Mahama takes over on the 7th of January 2021, mm. he will answer questions for the loss he's occasioned to the state mm. by his arbitrariness and, 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 and arbitrary actions. The senior minister on his own cannot just write to end a legal contract mm. and cost the Ghanaian state revenue. In this time and age, at this period where we sit, mm. There's one thing that is critical for the survival of the state, revenue for the government. For President Akufo to build his aided hospitals, he needs, he needs revenue. He needs revenue. And the biggest earner of revenue is our ports for government. We have a system that has worked since 2002 at the port of Ghana, year on year bringing in revenue and increased revenue. And then you have the senior minister wake up and for no reason, Say that he's terminating that contract and bringing in a company that has a track record of failure across the African continent. In Cameroon, they failed. In Tanzania, they failed. In Sierra Leone, the, partner, the Ghanaian partner is being billed for, for tax evasion. And those are the people he wants to hand the port over to. Then you write to the company that has the competence, proven track record to deliver GCNet and West Blue to pack up their systems. Pack up the systems. And for two days, Nobody is able to pay duty. You know, what is even more telling is that, Johnny, in Takrade, mm. they tried to shut down, they shut down the GCNet system about a week and a half ago. Okay. And you know what was happening? No. People went back to the manual. So Dr. Baumia to Palace Port is up in flames. So we lost People money. went back to the manual. We, we, lost money. we didn't just, you, you lost revenue to the CTS because you, you know what happened? I have seen critical evidence where people who were supposed to pay valuation of 7,700 mm. per the GCNet system. Because GCNet was not where they had to go to Unipass, they then go to a customs officer who does a valuation of 1,300. And then the balance on top is shared between the customs officer and the, 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 the agent. You know so, this for a fact? For a fact. Lost to the state. This is the whole reason why we automated the ports. Because we didn't want to leave the valuation to the discretion of individuals. So it is done based on a computation system on, on, on science on, on on, the, on, on science and technology and so nobody can manipulate the system mm. but when you say that people must now revert to the manual system in this is what's happening where people were now going back and customs officers were choosing what the valuation to be and god was losing revenue and individuals were making money that is the responsibility of the actions and decisions being taken by the senior minister it's and, the, the finder the, that's the, finder, the publisher is mentioning four persons the senior minister uh, Alan Tamantin, Minister for Trade, Trade, whose ministry actually signed this deal, yes. is mentioning uh, Deputy Minister Oku Kwating for Finance and Deputy Minister for Trade, Dr. Yes, yes absolutely. People. All of these people are playing him, but you see, in all of this, all the four names I've mentioned, the lead e figure is a senior minister. Why are you interested in a senior minister? No, because four he, people have mentioned. No, it's not about him. It's, it's like if you come to Parliament and you're mm -hmm. talking about defense and security issues. And you mention five MPs on the committee. And you mention Seth's name. Okay. He's the man of the committee. Right. He's the Ogboro there. Amongst the four names you've mentioned, two deputy ministers, a minister, and a senior minister. The two deputy ministers can't dictate to the senior minister what to do. Even the minister cannot dictate to the senior minister. The senior minister told us mm. that he oversees all the ministers. So it means the minister for it works up to him. Mm. Ultimate responsibility and ultimacy. Who signed the letter to GCNet? That the NOS blew to 10 of their systems. It was a senior minister. It wasn't a minister for trade. Who instructed the minister for trade to sign new contract with Unipass? It was a senior minister. What is in for the senior minister? That's the question we must be asking. And he's making us lose revenue. Look, this
net are good corporate citizens. They're fantastic corporate citizens. I was using it. Mm. I will not turn on my systems. You don't they write. Say they are good citizens. That's and, what they say. Exactly. I'm saying that we, we <laughs> owe a debt of gratitude to GCNet and West Blue. This country owes them a debt of gratitude. Because if I was them, I would not turn it on. You don't write officially to me when I have a contract that is valid in 2023. You terminate my contract arbitrarily, bastardize me, open up my systems and, and, and my locations to a competitor, abuse my intellectual rights. When you are in trouble and you are running, the, the state is no longer making revenue, you don't even have the decency to write back to me officially like you did when you were terminating my contract. You don't have the decency to write back to me and say, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Please come and salvage me. But you call me tweeting at the Flagstaff House and then by word of mouth ask me to go and open up. I mean, GCNet must demand something in writing from the senior minister. When he wanted them to close their systems, he wrote, he, he wrote to them. But you see, where we sit as a country, mm. and you see, this is where you want the to see... For me yes, so this is where you want to see the president's action. The president is quick to commiserate to uh, Buhari mm. when his ADC dies, or his chief out dies. That is in less than 24 hours. But the president cannot see, has not heard, that the parts of his country Straight forward are crying. Importers are dying. Maybe somebody's not telling the president because the president cannot be everywhere. That's why who is this somebody who is this somebody who can tell President Kufado that Buhari's chief of staff has died for him to take action on it and commiserate with him. For him to be able to send a birthday message to Andre Ayu on his birthday, for him to be able to commiserate with Boris Johnson. But his own harbor, his own ports. His own port for two days is shut down and the president doesn't know. The, the, president, president, the president has the, the morning briefings and nobody mentions them to him. How, how then the president, president should fight everybody who is doing his morning briefings. The president will be misleading him for too long. If the president... Why? The president doesn't watch news. He's very good friends with Donald Trump. Donald Trump watches the news and finds information. GCNet issue has been in the news. Every media house is talking about this thing for the past two weeks. Why? The president can't he hear. <sighs> Seth, the... The all the key stakeholders, the freight forwarders, everybody who works at the airport seems to be singing the same song that Unipass is not ready and we should maintain G Cement. At least that's the impression I get. We've been speaking to the freight forwarders. Like some said, we engaged him from two weeks ago and then subsequently we engaged some other stakeholders. Why is the government not listening to to what they are saying that Maintain GCNet because Unipass is not ready. Thank you very much. I, I'm glad this matter has come up. And uh, I'm happy you rightly said that GCNet are good citizens. And I'm saying this on emphasis. At least GCNet is a creation that started in 2002. Mm -hmm. And for us, they've been working. I've listened to the conversations back and forth. Mm -hmm. And... It is a matter which is still within like all work in progress. I'm sure they would still find a very workable solution in respect of the trade engagements that is going on mm. now. We unfortunately are at this area today and like you said, it is not necessarily that the government is not listening or the president doesn't listen to news or he doesn't watch news. But if you allow able subordinates mm -hmm. and you assign them roles, each and every person is accountable to their stewardship. Right. And so the president, by our laws that we work with in this land, mandated him to be the head of the executive and lead the executive. Mm -hmm. And like you rightly said, he cannot be everywhere, every moment, every second. I'm sure this matter cannot be fully out of his cabinet's conversation. Mm -hmm. Definitely there are matters that is going on mm. but you would only have to get the real bare facts before you're able to make a full decision and a judgment okay. as a test now i have listened to the conversations and i've read about them overly for a period mm. and i hasten slowly to conclude but what i will say is that we should look out for the best mm. to enable all of us i would how, how do you mean uh, let, me, they, let me let me let me let me just travel the, the stakeholders are saying that look the same uh, stakeholders G the same 
stakeholders has a depending depending on depending system. on an introduction of ISO any certified I am they have experience those categorizations those, those categorizations are, are very very clear uh, like, like I said GCNet was a creation of an administration that this tradition that we belong to are in office today I read it too I don't think you just threw your bay and a good water all the way like that like I said it's a matter that I call work in progress. I think we need to have the best of the narrative at the end of the day. That, that will convince everybody that decisions which we're taking, we're taking not necessarily on any ill motive, mm -hmm. but on purely a transaction which is on trade. Well, and what's trade wrong with benefits. GCNet, which is why we have to push them out? Because it does appear there's some form of unrestrained effort by the we were, minister, we're talking, the, we're talking the revenue here. We are talking. We are, we are, uh, we are the deputy talking. Finance minister, the deputy trade minister. Thank you very much. In the conversation, you mentioned three entities: mm. the financial sector, who is the ultimate beneficiary mm. of all the exercises. Mm. Trade comes in because they facilitate right. all those exercises mm. for them. Now, when it's all gone down there, mm. over the period, the Ghana Revenue Authority, who is managing the entire exercise. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, who takes all that comes to us into consolidation, mm -hmm. has requested for certain information. As far as I know, they requested for certain exercises to be done for them okay. by GCNet. Okay. And the, the end to end system. So, GCNet it's, we have it's a, the, conversation, the conversation is very technical. That is why I'm, I'm a bit summarizing my, my, my story. Mm -hmm. So, I may not have all the facts of the technicality. But, 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 the, but the, for, GCNet, for instance, the that end says, to end that says, look, this end to end system that you say Unipass is bringing, Mr. Government bring down our next to to have it in place. We have it in place. In fact, GCNet, as I know now, is in court with Unipass over plagiarism of a system, which now eventually has come out that GCNet and West Blue have come back. So then I'm asking, what is wrong with a team that's working to give you money? you taxes on top and you say stop work. what's what's wrong right? that's what i'm trying to understand I, I i i i if i listen clearly to you some matters are in court we will not just go to court for anything the court will certainly adjudicate right what led us to the court where we truthfully opting and working on it mm. you mentioned end to -end communication right Believing me, <coughs> Sorry. So that's okay. Believing me and sitting here with you, mm. if I give out information, you process it to really find out if what I'm saying is exact information you want to elicit from me. Mm. If it isn't, you come right. to me. Mm. So, in that trade facilitation, the Ghana Revenue Authority consistently in the reports that I have cited. Have been demanded for certain services from GCNet, okay. as far as I know, mm. and those services have not been fully accomplished. Hence, that warranted this new arrangement with Unipass. Mm. However, mm. like I said, a reasonable head, when realizes that there's a stalemate, if mm. and, and and mind you, the president cannot. That is why the constitution didn't create the president to run the administration by himself. Himself. Okay. You, you work with a lot of subordinates, and that is the way it is. says, look, we've been trying to book an appointment with the president, and it's, it's not been fruitful. The back stops with the president. And, he, they want and to you the mentioned president. almost five characters, mm. as Jata said, right. who are involved in this matter. Mm. I don't think they are empty heads. And they have been assigned a mandate, functional responsibility okay. on certain exercise. Okay. This behavior that we should always go to the chief even in a traditional setup you don't just get up and go to see the head of family mm. you need an intermediary and so for me it is proper that we all understand the conversation around the table mm. and then when we realize that we are making progress we stamp it on it i will say mm. and i'll dare say like i am go the path of some he knows i don't do that mm. The various names some mentioned are political exposed characters like myself. Mm. 
And such name calling that doesn't help the conversation. Right. We missed out on the substance of the matter. Mm -hmm. And that is my worry when it comes to some of these conversations. Okay. So the truth of the matter is that I have listened to GCNet. Mm -hmm. I have listened to Unipass. I have listened to my own colleagues. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. It's still work in progress. Regardless of how much we're losing while this back and forth goes on, Mind you, economy is in is any not, misunderstanding. Economy is not running in at any optimum. misunderstanding. You, 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 you get you get a customer. Hold on, our, our economy is not running at its optimal. And I'm reading on front page of the Finder newspaper. The president is directing the finance ministry and the Bank of Ghana find solutions to our, our economy. Right. The port is generating for us a huge, huge amounts of money. Certainly, revenue. certainly, that is. And where we want to toy. We are not toying with it. I won't use that language for that. We are not toying with it. Back to the manual system. We are not we back to it for two days. No, That's a lot no. of money. For instance, certain in your studio here, if we lose a grid that is offering us energy right. and your gents fails, mm. we may have to apply other methods. Right. In the circumstance, when there was a stalemate, could happen. That's an accident. Okay. I don't ever thought we were going to get there, but we got there. But we are come, we've come back. To the conversation table. That is the way we've got but, but going you, forward. You, you have not answered my, my key question, which I began with. What is wrong with the winning team, which is how to change it? No. Who I gave you, I gave you, I gave you some, I gave you some insights that it is not just change the winning team. Mm. There's been some consistent demands by revenue authority, okay. and that has called for all these. And you see this, we have fulfilled everything they're asking us to do. I, 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 I don't work in the revenue authority. Okay. So for the revenue authority to consistently come back to us, okay. it means there's a gap. All right. And we need to ensure that we get this gap out of the way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, yes. Sam, just, Bella, 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 fixing the screen uh, okay. quickly. Just, then... just, just, so, just so we are clear. I mean, this end-to-end -end business that's mm -hmm. been put out by that senior minister and mm -hmm. other members of government, that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why GCNet is being apps to go our way. Right. What is preventing what you call an end to system, which is what GCNet and West Blue were provided okay. before this government came into mm -hmm. office. When this government came into office, they introduced two things which are what they are claiming prevent an end to end. Mm -hmm. So the two things that create the, the, the breakage of what you may call an end to end mm -hmm. is not GCNet's creation. It's a creation of government. Okay. CTN, cargo tracking number. You remember? Mm -hmm. It was introduced by this government. Right. It raised a huge worry. And then the SML, Strategic Management Limited. Okay. Even with that, GNet and West Blue have found a way to integrate the CTN and the SML into their system. Okay, hold your horses. So I will come back. I'll ask Sec finally if government did uh, what do you call it, an audit, whether we have an audit report to say, okay, GCNet is not performing, so go away to the past come. Bella, welcome. All right, yeah, thank you. So let's just check out a few messages. And this one says, some George should stop the propaganda. If the NDC and those radio stations believe they've been shut down legally why not head to cause for a redress and stop the rhetoric and this is from razak danny jr in cnd good morning johnny let's call a spade a spade npp government hides behind the rti bill and causes harm to journalists let tv3 try to expose the government now and you see where you guys uh where your two legs will be the advantage is this npp government has over the ndc is that a lot of the tv stations fm stations and newspapers and gonna belong to them so npp government can easily spread falsehood within 30 minutes and the journalists must be bold enough to expose government this is from gershon and yet easy from asamankes it says Ghanaians will believe mm -hmm. Kuma and this government at their own risk what are they telling us how can the president then be advising Ghanaians to wear a nose mask whilst he's chosen not to wear it. Which opposition party in Ghana now will mount such a huge board for this constitutionally, uh, uh, for this dictatorship, uh, Kufado government? Okay, they should tell me again of all the recorded video speeches of the president from 1st to the 8th, which one of them did the president choose to wear a mask? None. Ghanaians no longer believe in the numerous lives of this Kufado government and his people. Good morning, Johnny, and to your cherished viewers. Kwame Nkrumah built Comfort Noche Teaching Hospital, expanded the 37 military hospital and opened it to the public, expanded and upgraded the Kalu Teaching Hospital uh, to a teaching hospital status. Okay, Buzia and Edward Akufuado built nothing. Kutuwe Japan built Tamale Hospital. Rollins built modern regional hospitals in Cape Coast and Tsunyane. Kufu upgraded the Tamale Hospital to a teaching hospital status and built a dozen of district hospitals. Mills built 
five polyclinics in the northern region, five in the upper west, and several strict hospitals. Mahama Bills Dodowa Hospital, Ridge Hospital, University of Ghana Medical Center, etc. The Kufado is yet to build even a hen coop. Let's vote for change. Oh. Interesting. And this is from Triddles. <laughs> MPP simply has solved all our problems on paper. Johnny, anything the MPP touch becomes a problem for them. Common bill boards, 120 plus ministers, is still a mess. Floating food bridge, Basar. What they did to others, they shall receive through times that confused everywhere with the so-called men uh tony from tammy good morning tv3 johnny et and bella you guys are doing well your programs are very educative please why um the government can't contract registered face mask produced across all regions in ghana to produce certified and a specific nose mask for the citizens to prevent the community spread then important to build other country economy okay most companies from all regions have now registered with fda also, contracts shouldn't be offered to only companies in Accra. This will help equip our local designers. And this is Jeff. I mean, last week we talked extensively about uh, the idea and the requirements for registering your company if you want to produce some of these PPEs. Yeah. Uh, Annabelle George is really unstoppable. It's He's actually 250 cities now. Exactly. Oh, now yeah. it's 250. Yeah, 250. I thought it was 255. Yeah. So 750 cities is for three years. Okay, and, and 250 now for a year. Okay. Annabelle some George is really unstoppable. He has made us know the life in government, uh, starting from the presidency to the foot soldiers from Osman Bukurisong mm. inside Tamil. There are more, but unfortunately, I'm time constrained, so I'll stop here. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Hanalisa says this one. She says, um, my, it, it was nice experience to do what you guys do on Friday. Thanks to you all for the assistance. Keeping up with the good work. Uh, keep up with the good work. This one, Dr. Hanalisa to Johnny Bella and Etanam. Good morning, Doc, to you. Sam, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, Chief, so was there an audit to to say that GCNet is not satisfying the prerequisites that government is asking to satisfy, which is why they had the ask to go home? <laughs> 30 seconds for you, I'm in closing. 30 direction. seconds to answer your question. I think I told you earlier that the consistency of GRA's demand is what has led us all of us into this matter. It is GRA that interfaces with GCNet on behalf of the state. And so it is not any politician's mind. But was it that is audit, what have report. you seen an audit paper? Certainly they are, they've been working at it. It's, like I said, that's a work in progress. Okay. That's what they've been doing. Okay, so wrap up for me, 30 seconds. You know, this is a new angle I'm hearing that is GRA's demands. GRA is a shareholder of GCNet. Right. GRA owns 20% of GCNet. And so if GRA has a problem with GCNet operations, they are a shareholder, a stakeholder. How would GRA start by terminating or pushing for the termination of a contract with a company that they are a shareholder in and give that same contract to a company where GRA does not have a share? Mm. <laughs> has no stakeholding in it. sit on the board and disagree you get on, it. It. Mm. On, on the part uh, that set, respectfully, I agree with G, G, GRA has not established before anybody. In fact, GRA's operations, the running of GRA sites mm. at the borders, the diesel that they used to run the, the they used to so run the, the generators so there is bought by GCNet. So okay. Partnership. So how then how then do we well, claim as, that as, that as part, part of the arrangement? Wait, as part of the arrangement, who collects the funds for the states? Is it me or you? It's oh, GRA. GRA. So okay. where do we get the facts but from? But GRA. GRA Jerry has always been meeting and surpassing his target. Jerry has never. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It's not all the time. Thank you. Honorable Secretary Kwame Champo is the member of parliament for Empire Su constituency. He's also a member and the chairman of the Defense and Security Committee in Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And Dr. George is also a member of the Communications Committee of Parliament. He's also a member of parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. I wish you well. Your forthcoming primary, sir. I'm grateful. I hope that you go back to Parliament I'm and grateful. find gentlemen. Yes. I'm grateful. Uh, we after the